Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where I'll be translating The Merchant of Venice into modern English. On screen you'll see the original text and I'll give you the modern version written by me. Belmont, a room in Portia's house, flourish of cornets, enter Portia with the Prince of Morocco and their trains. Portia, go and open the curtains and reveal the three boxes to this noble prince. Now you must choose. Morocco, the first one, made of gold, has an inscription which says, Whoever chooses me will get what many men desire. The second one, made of silver, promises this, Whoever chooses me will get what he deserves. This third one, made of dull lead, has a blunt warning which says, Whoever chooses me must give and risk all he has. How can I know how to choose the right one? Portia, one of them contains my picture, Prince. If you choose that one, then I am yours along with the picture. Morocco. Some god, please help me to choose the right one. Let me see. I will study this inscription again. What does this lead box say? Whoever chooses me must give and risk all he has. Must give everything. For what? For lead? Risk everything for lead? This box threatens. Men who risk everything do it in the hope of fair gain. A golden mind doesn't stoop so low as to choose something that is worthless. So I won't give or risk anything for lead. What does this silver one say? Whoever chooses me will get what he deserves. What he deserves? Wait a minute, Morocco, and assess your value with a level head. If you're being assessed by your own standards, then you deserve plenty, and yet plenty may not be enough to deserve the lady. And yet to question whether I deserve her is to do myself a disservice. How much do I deserve? Well, that's the lady. By my noble birth I deserve her, and in wealth, in graces, and by high breeding. But even more than these, in love do I deserve her. What if I went no further but chose this one? Let's look once more at this inscription engraved on the gold one. Whoever chooses me will get what many men desire. Well, of course, that's the lady. The whole world desires her. They come from the four corners of the earth to kiss this shrine, this living, breathing saint. The Hyrcanian deserts and the vast wilderness of Arabia are roads well-travelled now for princes to come to woo beautiful Portia. The wild seas, whose biggest waves reach up to the heavens, are no deterrent to the foreign suitors, but they come as if traversing a mere stream in order to see the beautiful Portia. One of these three boxes contains her heavenly picture. Is it likely that the lead box contains her? It would be damnation to contemplate such an unworthy thought. It would be too dreadful to conceal her in an unmarked grave. Or should I decide that she's concealed in the silver box, which is ten times less valuable than gold? Oh, what a sinful thought! Such a valuable gem would never be set in anything less valuable than gold. In England, there's a coin which carries the figure of an angel engraved in gold, but that's engraved upon it. But here is an angel in a golden bed inside this golden box. Give me the key. This is the one I'm choosing, and I hope I shall be successful. Portia, there, take the key, prince, and if my picture is in there, then I am yours. He unlocks the golden casket. Morocco. Oh, hell, what have we here? A skull, and inside the eye socket there is a written scroll. I will read it reads, All that glitters is not gold. Often have you heard that told. Many a man has lost his life by looking at the outside. Coffins decorated with golds contain worms within them. If your wisdom had equaled your boldness, if you'd been young in body but had the judgment of an old man, you would not have been reading your answer on this scroll. Goodbye, your suit has been unsuccessful. Cold indeed, and unfruitful labour. Then, goodbye, son, a welcome frost. Goodbye, Portia. My heart is too grief stricken to prolong my departing, so we go our separate ways. Exit with his train, flourish of corner. Portia, a polite goodbye. Close the curtain. Go away. I don't want any man of his skin colour to choose me. Act 2, Scene 8. Venice, a street. Enter Solerio and Solanio. Salerio. Well, I saw Bassanio sailing away, and Graciano has gone with him, and I'm sure that Lorenzo is not with them. Solanio. That villainous Jew made the Duke aware of his complaints, and he went with them to search Bassanio's ship. Salerio. But he was too late. The ship had already set sail, and then the Duke was informed that seen together in a gondola were Lorenzo and his lover, Jessica. Anyway, Antonio assured the Duke that they were not with Bassanio on his ship. 
Solanio, I've never heard such confused rage, as bizarre, outrageous, and as changeable as that dog the Jew expressed in the streets. My daughter, oh my ducats, oh my daughter, run off with a Christian, oh my Christian ducats, justice, the law, my ducats and my daughter, a sealed bag, two sealed bags of ducats, of double ducats, stolen from me by my daughter, and jewels, two stones, two rich and precious stones, stolen by my daughter, justice, find the girl, she has my stones and ducats on her. Salerio. All the boys in Venice were following him, shouting, his stones, his daughter, and his ducats. Solanio. I hope Antonio pays his loan back on time, or he'll pay the price for this. Salerio. Good point. I chatted with a Frenchman yesterday who told me that, in the channel that separates France and England, there sank a Venetian ship which was laden with riches. I thought of Antonio when he told me, and silently hoped it wasn't his. Solanio. You'd better tell Antonio about what you heard, but tell him gently, or it could be a shock. Solerio. You couldn't find a kinder gentleman on this earth. I saw Bassanio and Antonio saying goodbye to each other. Bassanio told him he'd hurry back. He responded, don't hurry back. Don't rush your business for my sake, Bassanio, but stay for as long as is needed. And as for the bond which the Jew has committed me to, don't even let it enter your mind which is focused on love. Be happy and turn your attention to courtship and affairs of the heart which will surely come your way. And then, his eyes filled with tears and turning his face away, he extended his hand behind him, and with deep, genuine affection he shook Bassanio's hand, and then they went their separate ways. Solanio, I think that he's the reason Antonio loves life, Please, let's go and find him and relieve his heavy heart with some delight or other. Solerio, yes, let's do that.